<laughs> Hello, guys. We are back with another um, preview with Matt, who is to my left. Hello. Um, Bristol oh, City. Okay. Him. Go on. I was just going to say, I always get these previews to do where you're going to make pull stuff out of my backside to sort of say yeah. about the next game. It's a lot yeah. easier when there's been a game you can talk about. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> We've got um, Bristol City. Um, how do you feel about going into it, especially after oh. the winners sat there? Well, it's, the momentum continues, doesn't it? I didn't personally. I didn't think we played as well as we could. We, you know, we could have won four nil on a, on another day quite easily, but we did all. We tried to do all the right things and did some of them right, and we won again, um, which was nice to get get three points at home. So you know, twenty odd thousands got to see it. And uh, yeah, it'll be a bit of a it'll be a trip, and um, we've got a decent chance, haven't we? I think, don't you? Ah, oh, definitely. I mean, um, I mean, it was nice to see us win on Saturday. I mean, the first time we won at home since Leeds back in twenty twenty, yeah, like, which is ridiculous. Yes, in front of the fans, so it's took us that long. And I mean, when we won on Saturday, it just felt a bit sigh of relief. Yeah, I know it was game. It was game ridiculous, but uh, you know the next two games are going to be an acid test, aren't they? Really, because mm. Bristol's tricky, um, and Fulham. Well, you know, you could you could lose both of them. You could draw both of them. Uh, you know, you like to think we might win both of them, but you know anything could happen, really. And it wouldn't be that surprising. I, you know, two points would be kind of okay, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think Fulham. I don't know, one of them ones where I think Bristol would can be a winnable game, but Fulham probably be the more of the tougher game. Yeah. I mean, uh, t- four points would be good, wouldn't it, out of the two yeah. games? Realistically, you'd take that you'd, if someone offered it to you now. so But but it's, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be a test, isn't it? If we mm. get four points, I think we'll have done well. If we get two points, we probably still might have done quite well. Um but you know, I'd like to think we'd get two points or three. Yeah, I mean, probably the two toughest tests we've done half on the Cooper at the minute. I mean, we've still got mm. the rest of the season come, but probably the toughest test at to come at us, especially with who, who we have played. Well, yeah, and and now the expectation, and he's shown his his hand, hasn't he? So there's not going to be any su- sort of surprise factor or or new manager bounce. This is like now down to business. So, you know, he's he's gonna, this is this is kind of like the grind we're getting into now. So it's going to be interesting because people are saying, "Are we going to get in the top six? Do we stand a chance? Are we kidding ourselves?" This is when we're going to find out, I think, to some extent. I mean, obviously, it's not all based on the next two games, but if if we do get, a, say, a win and a draw, or even better, you will start to think, "Well, you know, who's going to beat us?" Yeah, and it's coming up to that nitty nitty. Gritty time of the year with, I mean, yes. I know we got another international break, but it is coming up to that nitty gritty time of the year now. Yes, and and so far so good. It, you know, we've gone from not being able to win a game. Now you're saying, well, how are we going to get beaten? We haven't picked up touch wood too many um, injuries and things. We've got a few fringe players. That, I thought Lolly was brilliant when he came on. And, you know, if we can keep the fringe players happy and you hear Taylor saying nice things about the manager and stuff like that, you know, if we can keep them happy, get Carvalho involved somehow, these kind of things, then we're going to have options. And, you know, maybe we're going to be well set come the busy Christmas period, see where it takes us. You know, we've got some points on the board, which we, you know, have a hell of a time managing before. Oh, I do actually agree. I mean... Um, I don't know if you read Stevie Cooper's um, interview, uh, well, press conference, but they were saying about Carfello himself, saying that he has been a bit unlucky not to get into the team. With, um, oh, yeah, no. Yeah. No, I missed that bit, but, but yeah, OK. No, he, he says all the right stuff, and mm. I'd like to think the same as with, well, Colback, for example, but all the players feel more engaged, mm. and Carvalho would probably be feeling a lot happier about his chance as and when he gets it compared to how he would have been where it's like getting the call from the executioner when old Hutton gives you <laughs> says you on the you can come on or something. You know, it's not gonna be good. It's not gonna end well. So um 
they'll all want to play, won't they? Yeah. Oh, they will be now. I mean, I mean, this formation will set for us up anyway, especially with Carl Fally. I mean, when he flabbed and uh, O'Neill with it. Yeah, actually, that's true. I've never thought about that. But, but um, well, it's, it's going to be interesting. It's not it's not easy to slot him in. But um, it'll be nice. You know, and they need to find out if, if, if we can get a tune out of Carvalho. We've got to find out, really, before Christmas, ideally. So, let's see. I mean, he, he's improved every player the same way as Hutton ruined every single player in the squad. Cooper's improved every player. And so, why not? You know, all those good... Those, you know the the guys around the edge or the or the under twenty threes as well. I'd like to see some of them get a chance, if possible. Oh yeah, I mean I can't I can't see most of them being not too far away from. I mean I know they said about Fauna been training with them and everything, and with this nitty gritty time, yeah, I mean can see that most of them being more involved than anything. Well, you know, you know, someone's going to get sent off. Someone's going to twist their ankle, do whatever they do. Hopefully, nothing too serious. But accidents will happen. We will have our bumps in the road. And uh, yeah, I mean, so, touch wood. So far, so good. The results keep coming. Um, they're playing well enough, and they're, you know, they're, like I say, they're doing all the right things. And it's it's a complete turnaround from what it was before. And I think, if nothing else, we all. All that stuff, you, we all were told, like, why aren't they picking him? He's rubbish. How does he get in the team? Oh, but this guy works with them every day. He's an expert. He knows better than you do. It's like, no, no. That story is such a load of nonsense. Yeah, that guy did work with them all day. And he was the only guy that didn't figure out any of it. And his, his mate did. And the guy that came in, you know, just watched a few videos. He knew exactly what to do. And half the crowd knew too. So, you know. It was the Emperor's new clothes, wasn't it, with with Hewton? He, he didn't know what he's doing at all. We all knew it. Yeah. I do actually agree, actually, with that one. Um, I mean, Hewton would like Hewton to be fair that. I don't know. The thing I, I never get is is how you can get that much, have that much experience. Forget being a football manager, but just being that old and thinking that's the right way to run a football team. That's going to be successful. Like, tell you what, I'll stick with it. It's just common sense. You know, if it's going terrible, don't keep doing the same thing. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd love to someone to have actually asked him, you know, why don't you try something different? Why don't you sort of engage your players and not tell them they're rubbish every week? Uh, you know, it might work. Yeah. I just don't get it. It seemed, you know, in hindsight, it seemed like he literally would just turn it up, take the money and get the payoff as soon as possible. That's... To me, that's the only plausible. I, 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 I can't believe he could be that bad by accident. Yeah. Um, but anyway, let's forget about that. That's history yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. Um, Bristol City on Tuesday. I mean, we said earlier that a point will do or a win. Um, that got Nigel nice Pearson as well as in charge. Hmm. Yeah. No, it, I fancy us to win. Uh, I think we can. I, you know, uh, now you can't see us conceding goals at all, really. And and we pose a threat. And, you know, I think we stand a decent chance of getting a result there. And, and I feel equally confident. Fulham are kind of a bit erratic. So, you, you know, you could get them on a good day or you could get them on a bad day. But I'd like to think, you know, we're going in evenly matched with them at home, at least. So... You know, personally, I'd take four points from the next two games and a win tomorrow would be a good start, wouldn't it? Ah, uh, yeah, definitely. Um, would you change the team too much for... Um, yeah, I knew that. No, I knew that would be the next question. No, um, yeah, you can't, can you? Aye. You can't. You can't really. There's, you know... Like I say, I thought Lolly was looked good. Uh, all things being equal, if we're drawn or something like this, maybe you have said, "Well, oh, he deserves a go." Um, but you, he'll stick to the same team near enough. Uh, fit the, the two midfielders were absolutely exhausted, so hopefully they've sort of put their feet up for the last day or two, and they'll be all right. And but as soon as no fitness problems, he should keep the same team. It's no point messing around with it. It's the kind of thing you mess around with. You don't get a result, and then you you don't get a result in the next game. You think, why the hell did I? 
bother. Mm. So I just don't don't be clever. Leave it as it is. Mm. Yeah, completely agree. I mean, grabbing it in that sort of peachy form that you do need from him. I mean, five yeah. goals and seven, it's like we've been all, all this time, but that now it's getting the surface. Absolutely. Yeah, you you know, we've seen he can't do it with like one chance a game. That chance becomes twice as hard, doesn't it? If you know yeah. only you're going to get one or two if you're lucky. But now you wouldn't bet against him getting 20 goals, would you? Mm. And you... And you'd say Johnson's got a good chance of getting into double figures, you know, and possibly one or two others. So, you know, Zinc and these kind of guys could be getting into double figures. So it's complete, you know, own goal is completely out of the the equation this season now. Yeah. <laughs> I bet we double already on the um, goal scored from this time that last season. <laughs> yeah. No, I know it's just a, it's just it's just a shame we wasted those four games or whatever. We got absolutely nothing out of them, you know. If we could have, owned, well, we got we got a point. But if we if he hadn't been given quite so long, if we'd given one more game or something like that, we'd be in a yeah decent position. But like I say, come come get these next two fixtures behind us, pick up four points. We'll still be in a in a in a really strong position, won't we? And we we'll be looking up rather than looking down. Well, I think we already are, aren't we? Yeah, definitely. What's the um, score going to be? <laughs> let's say one nil. Let's let's be conservative for a change. I think I think everyone keeps saying two nil, three nil, and all this getting a bit carried away with it. Let's say one nil. Good old days. Let's say, let's say a sort of Sabri type uh, yeah. performance. Yeah, control, decent grabbing on the on the break. How about that? Oh, that'd be nice if we did get that. I'd like to say thank you for Matt for coming on. Thanks very much, Dan. Thanks. So I'll catch you guys later.